Coffee is enjoyed by millions of people around the world and is one of the most researched items in the food and drink category. It naturally contains a variety of compounds, including caffeine and polyphenols, which contribute not only to the unique flavor, but also to its physiological effects. Caffeine is a major pharmacologically active compound in coffee and a mild central nervous system stimulant, which is why a cup of coffee in the morning can help you feel more alert. Coffee consumption is also associated with effects on the process of digestion. Digestion occurs through the synchronized function of several organs, many of which make up the gastrointestinal GI tract. It is coordinated by the nervous system and a number of different hormones, which in turn can be impacted by external factors. When you consume coffee, research suggests that it can stimulate the secretion of a hormone called gastrin, produced by the cells of the stomach wall, which stimulates production of gastric acid in the stomach and increases stomach motility. A common question among consumers is whether coffee is associated with heartburn or gastroesophageal reflux disease or gourd. Heartburn is a symptom of acid reflux which can cause pain or burning in the upper abdomen. Gourd, on the other hand, is a more severe condition, of which acid reflux, heartburn, is a symptom. In addition to frequent heartburn, gourd symptoms may include regurgitation of food or liquid and difficulty swallowing or a cough. <coughs> the link between coffee consumption and gourd has been an active area of research. While a small number of studies have suggested an association between coffee drinking and gourd, the majority of studies reviewed suggest that coffee is not a major trigger on these conditions. The fact is that gourd is a complex condition and it is difficult to identify a specific cause in an individual. Links have been made to many different food and drink items, including spicy dishes, beer, wine, carbonated soft drinks and chocolate, all with having a higher level of obesity or higher body mass index. Now, let's look at the gallbladder, the organ that receives and stores bile produced by the liver. Bile is secreted periodically from the gallbladder into the small intestine, where it is largely involved in the digestion of fats. Coffee can stimulate the secretion of cholecystokinin, or CCK. CCK is a hormone that improves digestion by slowing down the emptying of food from the stomach and stimulating the production of bile in the liver and its release from the gallbladder. The effect has been observed with both regular and decaffeinated coffee and can give rise to small increases in plasma CCK and stimulate gallbladder contractions. Research on gallbladder function has suggested that coffee is also associated with a reduced risk of gallstone disease and that the association seems to be dose dependent, with a greater effect observed with higher intakes of coffee. Although the mechanisms are unclear, caffeine is likely to be key as the effect is not observed with decaffeinated coffee. Furthermore, caffeine has been shown to enhance the contraction of the gallbladder, which could contribute to a reduced risk of gallstones. CCK has also been shown to stimulate secretions of the pancreas, which sits alongside the duodenum and is responsible for releasing enzymes for the digestion of proteins, carbohydrates and lipids. Research has suggested that coffee consumption may be associated with a reduced risk of pancreatitis. As ingested food moves through the digestive system and into the lower GI tract, the rate that it moves is determined by colonic motility. This process needs to be carefully balanced to ensure waste is excreted correctly and to avoid complications associated with either constipation or diarrhea. Although the effects will vary from person to person, coffee seems to stimulate motility in the colon to a greater extent than both decaffeinated coffee and water. However, further research has suggested that decaffeinated coffee can also stimulate motility. In relation to bowel habits, research has indicated that coffee drinking is not associated with chronic constipation and may be linked to a reduced risk of this condition. A growing area of interest is the role of the gut microbiota, which is the different microbe populations present in your large intestine, including bacteria, archaea and viruses. Research has suggested that the population of beneficial gut bacteria, including the bifidobacterium species, increases in the intestine when coffee is consumed, without any major impact on the dominant microbiota. Dietary fiber found in coffee may be metabolized into short-chain fatty acids, helping to increase the presence of two species of dominant bacteria in the gut microbiota. Polyphenols in coffee, including chlorogen 
carcinogenic acid may also play a role. While further research is needed in many areas, it is clear that coffee interacts with various aspects of the digestive process and has some beneficial effects. This remains an interesting and evolving area of research. To find out more, please visit coffeeandhealth.org.